Hi, this is a demo of the scheduled email handler for the Web4 module for Drupal 8. My name is Jake Rockwitz. I'm known as Jay Rockwitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I'm built to maintain the Web4 module for Drupal 8. Well, the first question is, what's a scheduled email? Um, it's an email triggered by a Web4 submission that is sent on a later date. So the use case is someone saves a draft and you want to remind them to complete the draft a week after they've hit save. Um, another example would be if you're building an application review process and a submission is put into a review state, you might want to send an initial reminder that the submission needs to be reviewed and you might want to schedule a follow-up reminder a week later if that submission hasn't been updated. Um, another example would be for an event registration system, you might want to notify someone about an event they registered for a day or two before that event's going to occur. You could even do a one-year anniversary of when someone fills out the form. Basically, the date is completely flexible. Now, how it works is um, emails are scheduled based on a submission state. This could include the draft, completed or updated. The date can be any value. So you can get the, the date of the submission being sub when it's posted. You can look at elements on the form, or you can even look at a date field related to the node. For example, in an event registration system, you'd have an event node. Now, the send date will be rescheduled when the trigger is updated. The trigger meaning if someone resaves a node, if they reschedule the event, it will go into all those scheduled emails and change the date if that's what's driving. If you're sending out a reminder two days before the event and the event date change, you want that reminder to also change. Now, when the rescheduling happens, it'll all be queued, so it doesn't all happen at once, so it allows thousands of emails to be rescheduled at any time. And cron task or address command can be used to send the scheduled emails and also reschedule them. Um, some notes that are included in the documentation is, you know, only one email can be scheduled per handler and submission. You can set up multiple handlers to send out multiple emails. Um, that basically means you can send out a one-week notice or a two-week notice. You're going to have to create two emails for those notices. Um, deleting a handler will unschedule all scheduled emails. I think that's an expected behavior. And just a note that scheduled emails are automatically sent out at midnight. That's when it, the trigger starts. It's date-based, not time-based. Uh, partially because we're using cron, you can't really get specific and say send out a reminder five minutes before this timestamp. Now, I'd like to give you a little demo. I'm going to switch over. Um, while I was setting this up, I set up another demo. It's an event registration system. There's a form. The best way to show it to you is i got to navigate to the site because now there's a view that shows you events so we can look at them. I'm going to click through to one of these events. I'm going to go to the first event. And here's the date. It's automatically set. Very simple form. I'm going to actually fill out a test. I'm going to register. And you can see the registration went through. And I also have debugging turned on, so you're going to see that ready. It's telling us email scheduled to be sent on this date. Here's the email that's being sent out. If I click back and I go to the results, we're going to see this. And this brings up why I set up the login, because we just scheduled something in the future, and I want people to know that this is happening. And if you go in, you get a log that says an email reminder. Ready? The handler was an email reminder. The operation is email scheduled. And it's telling you that there's an email scheduled to be sent out in the future. And when that email is sent out, this log will track that. It just helps with some auditing, because what if someone says, you didn't send us that email? At least you have a record, a log of everything that's happening to each submission. Now, to get into how the handler is working, I'm going to jump back up to the form. I'm going to go over here. So we're on a, a node, an event node that has the registration form attached. And now if I go over, so this is the demo event registration. We're going to look at it. And we're going to go to edit. And what you're going to see is the handlers are set up. And here's the scheduled handler. And it, it basically extends the email handler and adds a send on and there's also the ability to unschedule. And I'll click through and show it to you. And it also shows you the status, which is just keeping track of things. You don't have to do anything, but something will happen when I go in here. So you can set different criteria, the open date, the close date, the submission created, completed, or changed. And then you can also inject tokens. And that's what I'm doing. I'm injecting a token from this, this demo event that I've set up. And I'm also setting kind of like an interval, and I'm saying one day before, or you can send it seven days after, or you can set custom number of days. These are a little nuanced, but to understand this box here, so unscheduled email when draft or submission is saved, down here, 
you can set up triggers to say, when is this email going to be triggered? Well, this is when the submission is completed. So when someone saves a draft, they're not going to get a reminder. If they're registering for an event and they save a draft, they're not getting a reminder. If they hit save and it's completed, it will send out. The challenge here, this is a little tricky, is let's say we're building a system where someone's saving drafts and we schedule a reminder for them to complete that draft two weeks, say, okay, you've saved a draft, please in two weeks come and update that draft. Well, let's say they complete the draft within those two weeks. You want to unschedule the email. And that's what this is going to do. If you check this off and someone changes the state of the, the submission, it will unschedule existing emails and it will reschedule them. If you want it set other parameters up, you can have different emails scheduled based on different states. It's a little tricky to explain. Um, I definitely could use help with documentation. You can see that in a later um, slide. And then this is if you're creating a new scheduled email and you need to send an email to all the existing submissions, if you check this box, it will queue all the existing submissions to get this new email. Um, including ones that have already received it. So it's really for creating new handlers. That's the recommendation. I strongly recommend everyone test this on their dev servers. And then these are the notes that are were just included. You know, one email can be scheduled. You should read through it. Nothing else, other, you see this box up here, this one scheduled email, that's what's unique to this handler. Everything else is the standard email handler. This is extending the plugin. This code that's included in the web form module is a great example of how to extend existing handlers and plugins. And it makes it possible to get really complex functionality while using a lot of the base functionality that exists. Um, I'm not going to get into code more than that. I just want to also point out that I enabled debugging. And now I'm going to hit save, and there will be a little nuanced behavior here. So by hitting save, I've re-triggered the rescheduling of this email. Basically, it's re-evaluating. Because what if the date changed in that handler, like we're using a custom date, we're going to need to reschedule all the existing emails. And this status, by the way, you don't have to do anything here. You don't even have to look at this. Because basically, whenever cron runs, it's going to go fix itself. It's not even fixing, it's just re-evaluating all the emails that are in the queue. I can hit run cron task, and this is what's going to happen in the background. It gives you an update and says, well, you know, oh, it looks at the already scheduled, it looked at the email in the queue and said it was already scheduled, it's fine, actually, no, nothing's getting updated in the log, because by the way, if an email gets rescheduled, the submission log will also track that and say, yeah, the email was rescheduled. This email is not being rescheduled because none of the parameters on when that email is being sent have changed. And now if you go down here, it's all set, and it'll be sent one day before the event. Um, that's a very quick demo. There is a test form, which I kind of want to show people because um, it helps developers really understand what's going on. And this test form is what I use to test all this functionality. And you can set up different triggers. So you can say, send a draft reminder plus 14 days, hit save, and the debugging is already turned on. It says, here's the draft reminder. And why I set up these forms is, this is very basic, and I actually use this in the automated test suite, but then if you go into the background of this, you have to turn on test the test module. But then if you go into the background, you start to see all the different variations. And you can see it's complete. So there's a yesterday email completed minus one day, tomorrow completed plus one day, last year where you set a custom date automatically, and then you could have a, a draft reminder, which is this is how it's triggered on draft. And this is that nuance that I was kind of, it's worth opening up unschedule and draft or submission is saved. So this makes sure that once the submission becomes completed, that scheduled email won't go out. Um, there's a pretty thorough demo of all the functionality here. Um, and also there's an example of a broken one. I really just want to point that out. If the date just doesn't evaluate, the email won't be scheduled. And the broken handler means like, let's say the date field's blank. It's an invalid date. The dates are ISO format, which is year, month, day. It's pretty standard in Drupal. Uh, I'm going to move on. So so what's next here? Well, you're starting to get some hints. I'm looking for suggestions and we need to make some tweaks. There needs to be more documentation. There's lots of nuances to this scheduled email handler. And it may require some optimization improvements. This this is designed to queue thousands of e Thousands of emails will be handled seamlessly without any noticeable issues whatsoever. Every hour, a thousand emails can be requeued. If you're dealing with tens and hundreds of thousands, it's still possible. We, you just have to set up the drush worker to run more frequently to schedule the emails. But we, you know, we can work on this. Um, so 
who sponsored this feature? I think it's really important because this was a sponsored feature to the Web4 module. Uh, Kensho State University has sponsored four tickets, and this was the last of a suite of tickets to kind of build a, an application system, and they're also doing an event registration system. So this, the saving of drafts is for an application system. So if someone saves a draft, you might want to send a reminder to finish. But they also want to schedule emails if someone registers for an event a week before the event to send out that reminder. Um, moving forward, I'd like to say, you know, hey, I'm available. How can I help you with web forms in Drupal 8? Uh, you know, I'm available for training, support, building a feature, which is exactly what Kentro State and I just did. We worked together and they are contributing this feature back to the Drupal community. And yeah, contact me if you need help and want me to contribute something to your project. My site's jrockwoods.com. I'm jrockwoods at drupal.org. And I just want to say thank you.